Today's lesson is on proving triangles similar. Take a minute to read over the learning goal and scale. Find where you are on the scale before we begin the lesson. We can show that two triangles are similar when we know the relationship between only two or three pairs of corresponding parts. Remember, there is no angle, angle, angle postulator theorem for determining if triangles are congruent. However, if all three angles of one triangle are congruent to three angles of another triangle, the triangles are definitely similar. Also keep in mind the triangle third angle theorem. If two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the third angles are also congruent. This leads us to the angle-angle similarity postulate. The angle-angle similarity postulate says, if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another, then the triangles are similar. In example one, we will use the angle-angle similarity postulate. Are the two triangles similar? And how do you know? Let's take a look at triangle RSW and triangle VSB. We know that angle R is congruent to angle V because they're both 45 degrees. We also know that angle WSR is congruent to angle BSV because they are vertical angles. Since two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of the other, the two triangles are similar. For part B, let's look at triangle JKL and triangle PQR. We know that angle L is congruent to angle R because they're both 70 degrees. However, angle J and angle Q are not congruent because one angle is 30 degrees and the other is 85. We don't know the measure of angle K, but we can figure it out by the triangle angle sum theorem. We also don't know the measure of angle P. So let's find the measure of angle K and the measure of angle P with the triangle angle sum theorem. Since angle K is not congruent to angle Q and angle J is not congruent to angle P, the two triangles are not similar because the corresponding angles are not congruent. Pause the video and do you try number one. Are the two triangles similar? How do you know? Again, let's take a look at the angles that we know the measures of. This angle and this angle are both 90 degrees. This is 39 degrees and this is 51. Let's find the two missing angles and compare those. Since the two angles are 90 degrees and these two angles are both 39 degrees, we really didn't need to find the measure of this angle. We know the two triangles are similar by the angle-angle similarity postulate. In part B, we have two isosceles triangles. Since this triangle's base angle is 68, we know the other base angle will also be 68 degrees. So let's find the missing vertex angle measure and see if it equals this vertex angle measure. Since the two vertex angles are not congruent, the two base angles of each triangle will not be congruent either. Therefore, these two triangles are not similar because the corresponding angles are not congruent. Here are two other ways to determine whether two triangles are similar. Let's look at the side angle side similarity theorem. If one angle of one triangle is congruent to an angle in another triangle, and the sides that include those angles are proportional, then the two triangles are similar. Next, let's have a look at the side 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 similarity theorem. If the corresponding sides of two triangles are proportional, then the triangles are similar. In example two, we will verify triangle similarity. Are the triangles similar? If so, write a similarity statement for the triangles. Because we are given the three side lengths of each triangle, let's try to prove these triangles similar by side-side-side similarity. If the corresponding sides of the triangles are proportional, then we have similarity. Let's start by writing the ratio of the lengths of the shortest sides of the triangles, 6 and 9. Next, let's write the ratio of the lengths of the medium length sides of the triangle, 8 and 12. And finally, let's write a ratio comparing the longest side of the triangle, side SU, which is 10, to side WX, which is 15. Since the ratios of all three corresponding sides are congruent, they're all 2 to 3, then the triangles are similar. 
So triangle STU is similar to triangle XVW. Be sure to write your triangles in corresponding order. For part B, we're going to look at triangle KLP and triangle KMN. Let's compare the left side of each triangle, 8 to 8 plus 2, or 10. Now let's compare the bottom side of the triangles, 12, and 12 plus 3, or 15. Since angle K is part of both triangles, it is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. So by the side-angle-side similarity theorem, our two triangles are similar. So triangle KLP is similar to triangle KMN by the side angle side similarity theorem because two of our sides are proportional and the included angle is congruent. Pause the video and do you try number two. Are the triangles similar? If so, write a similarity statement for the triangles and explain how you know the triangles are similar. Let's start by looking at the fact that side AC and CB are congruent and side EG and GF are congruent. They will share the same ratio 6 to 8. The third side of each triangle, AB and EF, will be the ratio 9 to 12. Since all three pairs of corresponding sides are proportional, our triangles are similar by the side-side-side similarity theorem. Be sure to write your similarity statement in corresponding order. In part B, triangle WAL and triangle EAC are overlapping triangles. They share angle A, and we're going to compare the ratio of side AW to AE and AL to AC. Since one angle of both triangles is congruent and the corresponding sides that include that angle are proportional, these two triangles are similar by the side-angle-side similarity theorem. In example three, we will prove triangles similar. The given is that side FG is congruent to side GH and side JK is congruent to side KL. They also give us that angle F is congruent to angle J. We want to prove that the two triangles are similar. Let's start with the given that side FG is congruent to side GH and that side JK is congruent to side KL. By the definition of isosceles triangles, triangle FGH and triangle JKL are isosceles triangles. Since all base angles of isosceles triangles are congruent, angle F is congruent to angle H and angle J is congruent to angle L. Now let's look at the second given statement, that angle F is congruent to angle J. Since angle F is congruent to angle H and angle F is congruent to angle J, angle H is congruent to angle J by the transitive property of congruence. Since angle H is congruent to angle J and angle J is congruent to angle L, angle H is congruent to angle L by the transitive property of congruence. Finally, since two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another, the triangles are similar by the angle-angle similarity postulate. So triangle FGH is similar to triangle JKL by the angle-angle similarity postulate. Pause the video and do you try number three. Let's start with the given information that side MP is parallel to side AC. Remember, if two lines are parallel, then alternate interior angles are congruent. Therefore, angle A is congruent to angle P, and angle C is congruent to angle M. Since two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another, the triangles are similar by angle-angle similarity postulate. Triangle ABC is similar to triangle PBM by the angle-angle similarity postulate. For the triangles in the proof, suppose you are given only that the length of side CA to the length of side PM is equal to the length of side CB and the length of side MB. Since side CA and side PM 
are proportional to sides CB and MB, we would need the included angles C and M to be congruent, since all we would know is that angle CBA and angle MBP, the vertical angles are congruent, we could not prove these triangles similar. Sometimes we can use similar triangles to find lengths that cannot be measured easily using a ruler or other measuring device. When this is the case, we can use indirect measurement to find the lengths that are difficult to measure directly. One method of indirect measurement uses the fact that light reflects off a mirror at the same angle at which it hits the mirror. So here, angle 1 would be congruent to angle 2. Another method uses the fact that the shadows of objects are proportional at the same time of day. So this shadow would be proportional to this shadow. In example 4, we will find links in similar triangles. Before rock climbing, Michael wants to know how high he will climb. He places a mirror on the ground and walks backward until he can see the top of the cliff in the mirror. What is the height of the cliff? By what Michael has done, he has formed two similar triangles. So let's write a proportion comparing the height of Michael to the distance he is from the mirror, to the height of the cliff, and the distance the cliff is from the mirror. Now let's use the cross products property to solve for x. Let's multiply our extremes and then multiply our means. Divide both sides by 6, and x equals 31.17. So the height of the cliff is approximately 32 feet. Pause the video and do you try number 4. Why is it important for the ground to be flat to use this method? We know that the light reflects off the mirror at the same angle as it hits it, so we have two congruent angles here. If the ground is flat, then the cliff is perpendicular to the ground, making a 90 degree angle, and Michael is standing perpendicular to the ground, making a 90 degree angle. Therefore, we would have angle-angle similarity. If the ground is not flat, the cliff and Michael's angles would not be congruent, and therefore we could not have similar triangles. Now is your chance to see how well you understand the lesson. Pause the video and do the lesson check. Don't forget to check your answers on the next slide. If you're uncertain about any of the questions, please be sure to ask me in class. Now take a minute to reread the learning goal and the scale. Have you climbed any higher on the scale since we started the lesson?